process. Once again, we're at Puma Punku on the Altiplano of Bolivia. This site was devastated in the distant past. You can see there's some stones that are still buried. And since the Tiwanaku civilization took over this location about 1,000 years ago, it started to be used as a quarry. And that continued up until the early part of the 20th century. I'm not looking for treasures. I'm looking for the knowledge what what happened with Tiwanaku. So I got 20 of this study, including a pyramid. I'm not allowed to tell where the pyramid is, but this is the work, scientific work we did for many years, and I'm very glad. Maybe it wasn't the time when, when they kick us off from the, the archaeology place, because we got this information. Nobody did get inside since the destruction of Tiwanaku. And we just have to dig one meter and a half and we can get in the chamber. It gotta be the big skeletons, part of the gold, of course, and all those things. But the most important, we have to decode what's inside inside here. It's very important to know you what we got here. So, as Antonio was saying, a meter and a half below this site, there are chambers because they did testing with ground penetrating radar. This is possibly, or this is, the largest slab which is left. It's made of red sandstone and weighs more than 100 tons. The location of the quarry is eight miles over those mountains. And these are some of the famous, <clears throat> excuse me, H-blocks. Four located here, and two located there, and two more located here. And here we have the interesting left arrow sign. It is unique at this location. So there are nine H-blocks in total. It's quite possible that there may have been a few more, but unlikely many more, because the H-block is a weird shape. And the construction of the little town of Tiwanaku over here, which is partially composed of stone from Pumapunku and Tiwanaku, we don't see any evidence of H-blocks there. So the idea that it was some kind of ramp for <clears throat> a rocket ship, or that um, it was a giant wall, is highly unlikely. But if there were only nine H-blocks, what was the function? And again, these massive sandstone blocks. Now what we see here is a lot of erosion of the surface because of course this part of this stone was exposed. But the area underneath was buried and therefore it is still pristinely flat. And when I say flat, <clears throat> excuse me, I mean extremely flat, as in almost laser flat. So clearly, some kind of devastating event happened here, and most likely prior to 1000 AD when it was discovered by the Tiwanaku civilization, because, again, some of these stones 
were buried underground. But what kind of cataclysm could it be? Or could it have been? Likely, it was a tsunami that came from Lake Titicaca, which is approximately seven miles in that direction. And a wall of mud came and buried the site that we call Pumapunku. As you can see, stones protruding from the wall, obviously buried by some cataclysmic event. So we have two forms of technology that was that were employed here. One of them did the roughing work. You see the rounded corner here, like that. And then another machine came here and produced the flat surface. That's what nobody else except me, I believe, shows, is that this H block here was never completed because the rounded corner is here, the sharp corner is here. In a finished H block, you have the crisp corner. And as engineer Chris Dunn noted, this shape is a dovetail. This distance is greater than this distance. And each H block has a unique shape and size, a unique dimension. No two are the same. This is obvious when we go behind it and look, you see, no two are the same. And again, with the backs of these two H blocks, that one, and then this one. There is no other site, no other location on planet Earth that looks like Pumapunku. It is nothing like what we see in Cusco, the Sacred Valley, and Machu Picchu. So whoever created it quite possibly only came to this location and produced here, which is very strange. It was not the Tiwanaku culture that did this work. It's an unknown civilization. The problem is that in the early 20th century, when they were building the local train track, they used dynamite and they blew up parts of Pumapunku in order to create the rail bed, thereby destroying a lot of the evidence. And as you've seen over there, they've lined all of the stones up in rows. So we have no idea where the original location of those stones were. We don't know where the H blocks, for example, originally were located. They were highly unlikely to have been in a row like that. And that's part of the problem with trying to decode Pumapunku. Also, 90% of the people who go and visit Tiwanaku, which is over there, never come here and explore Pumapunku because all they see 
is a pile of stones. Their curiosity is not strong enough to notice the age blocks and then come over here and explore. So this is the original foundation of Pumapunku. And as you can see, clearly, excavation had to be done in order to expose it. So it was buried underground, again, most likely by an ancient cataclysm. Levels 1, 2, 3, and 4 are the limestone, or sorry, the red sandstone. Level 5 is the gray andesite. No mortar or any kind of filler used in the foundation. All originally very tightly fitting together. Again, you see where it was buried. And then excavated. So again, the red sandstone is from a quarry eight miles off in this direction, whereas the gray andesite is from a volcano 45 miles in that direction. The red sandstone is not magnetic or does not respond to either a compass or a tesla meter, but the gray andesite does. It's not uniform. It's not that each of the andesite blocks has the same reading on the tesla meter. The surfaces and the angles seem to have a relationship with, um, the mag with magnetic fields, which is really quite intriguing. We find no art in the original work here. The Tiwanaku culture carved images like bird men, etc., on different surfaces, but whoever the original builders were, they did not employ what we call art. They created for function, and we'll see that when we go to Tiwanaku. You'll see beautiful flat surfaces, such as the Sun Gate, which were carved onto in a superficial manner by the Tiwanaku civilization who discovered the destroyed remains of a megalithic complex here at 13,000 feet in the Andes region, the Altiplano of Bolivia, seven miles from Lake Titicaca.